risk elder care is um, the, the biggest risk to a successful retirement outcome, right? So we, we should absolutely have the, the best month, right? <laughs> we, we should. Yeah. <laughs> and, and as we're talking about, you know, uh, e- even starting a conversation about long-term care insurance and, and, and tax, um, uh, tax planning, you know, there, there's an energy right now, if, if you're plugged in at all to, to uh, you know, the conversation around next year and, and President Biden's tax plan um, and, and some of what his, his green book has put out there, right? There's this mm-hmm. sense that taxes are going up, right? That, that uh, the estate uh, exemption, the estate tax exemption is coming down um, and that income taxes are going up. Um, and so there, there's absolutely an opportunity if you have folks that are wealthy um, um, or even high earners, right, mm-hmm. that are concerned about um, their tax situation uh, to have a conversation. But even beyond those folks, you know, you'll have and be able to pull in clients that don't fit that ultra wealthy category, or maybe they're not extremely high earn- earners. Um, but all of us feel this energy of, oh, no, taxes are going up. <laughs> and that energy mm-hmm. uh, uh, you can use, right, to have a conversation. Well, taxes are going up. Yes. Maybe it won't directly affect you, but it's still a good opportunity to have a conversation. Are, are you utilizing your current assets to position yourself and put yourself in, in the best place to take advantage of all these, these tax arbitrage opportunities that we're aware of? And long-term care planning can be one of those. I love it. I love it. And I, I think probably the, the biggest hiccup that we run into is, is how do you even start that conversation? Well, some of us aren't really comfortable getting into the whole touchy feely, oh, someday you're going to need care. And, and well, you know what, take it a completely different direction. Make it all about brass tacks, right? Make it all about that bottom line. And mm-hmm. that's some of the planning opportunities. And, and, and you don't have to be a CPA. You don't have to be a tax advisor. All you're doing is addressing the tax codes that are in place that allow you to share them as opportunities and leave it up to the CPAs and the accountants to make those decisions, right? That's between them and what they wanna defend with the IRS. All we're doing is simply sharing out the IRC codes. We're not giving tax advice. That's right. But we are at least saying, hey, did you realize that you may have these opportunities? And believe you me, I I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years and it's still, I feel like it's still (laughs) an unknown. I mean, Mm -hmm. folks just don't have the ideas of what they can do with this. And what's even more interesting is whenever somebody calls me and they want to talk about long-term care strategies, you know, hey, my clients want to quote, my clients are asking me about this. Sure. (laughs) I I tell you this much. I wish I, I had somebody that would call me and say, Angie, I've got a bucket full of clients that I think I probably need to have a conversation about extended care planning with. Let's put together a plan. In my right. over 20 years, that's uh-huh. never <laughs> happened. I'm ready yes. for it, though. I'm ready for it. Um, what we get instead of is my clients have asked me for mm-hmm. a quote. And so we go in presenting this illustration instead of finding out what's the real, what is causing the conversation. Because mm-hmm. the first thing you got to do is get the underwriting out of the way. That's but a right. lot of times, we're overlooking the fact that even in the life insurance contracts that have true LTC riders on them, there's still the opportunity for the tax play there. I mean, the the deduction of it. So, um, yes. and you guys have that. And, you know, we see like right now, I mean, later this week, we're gonna sit down and have our planning session for 2022, kind of line out the meetings we've got and things of that nature. Right. Don't most successful businesses have some sort of a gear up? You know, here's our marketing strategy. Here's what we're going for. Mm -hmm. Why don't we address our, you know, if you're in a property and casualty agency, why aren't we addressing our commercial accounts in that aspect? Why aren't we talking to them about their company's strategies? You know, what if some of them have had very successful years and we want to look at a way to pull out retained earnings out of a C corporation if, you know, the very few of those that happen to be left that I run into. Absolutely. Yeah, no, Angie, that's, that's a great opportunity. And, and, and you're right for the, for the uh, planners and, and advisors and agents out there that get it. 
Um, you know, it's, it's few and far in between, but I have, as we're having these conversations, I have had a few folks that, that really understand the opportunity, particularly as we talk about uh, corporations or, or, or C-Corps and the opportunity to, to put in place an executive plan. And they're identifying all the businesses that they work with that fit a particular profile that they think would be good candidates to, to offer long-term care plans to some of their key executives uh, and, and be able to take uh, uh, full deductions as a business for those plans. Um, and, and so we'll certainly talk about that, but, but great opportunities there. Mm-hmm. And you know, John, sometimes I think people get a little bit overwhelmed in this space in having these type of conversations because they think they've got to go find that that massive corporation with 5,000 employees and 50 top executives. It doesn't have to be that. No, no, not at all. But small businesses is, is really what, where we specialize and where we see a lot of, a lot of success. Yeah. And speaking of small businesses, I mean, I'm, I'm sure all of you in your communities are, are hearing this big, big push to go support your small businesses. Mm-hmm. So while you're in there supporting them, they're all going to be, I mean, we're all getting ready to look at our bottom lines, right? We're getting ready to, to approach December 31st, and we're getting ready to find out what the bottom lines of our companies look like. Some of them have been successful. Some of them have struggled. Those mm-hmm. that are left have found a way to survive. Well, what if there was an opportunity to have a conversation about the tax deductibility to protect their business and their personal assets against an extended care illness. Right, right. And, and, and you know, John, to piggyback, to piggyback off of what we talked about last month, mm-hmm. COVID plays into this. And, and believe you me, trust me, I'm sick of talking about it just like everybody else is. However, it's still in our face and yes. it, it is still a reality. I mean, everybody's, I'm sure your communities are posting Facebook feeds all the time from your county health departments about how many people mm-hmm. are sick and this and that. It, it's it's a reality that people are still very aware that an illness can strike. You can be a very healthy individual and mm-hmm. still get stricken with a chronic illness and the longstanding yes. effects from some of these things. I mean, I have someone that had COVID last year and all of a sudden they're now hospitalized with pneumonia-like symptoms with respiratory yes. issues because right. of the lung damage that was done. It, yes. I mean- those business owners need to hear about these planning solutions. So You're John, right. I didn't right. I didn't know if you had any anything that you wanted to share specifically around any of your different strategies that you've you've had success with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, Angie and and, and um, oh, I have a ton to share, probably more than we have have time for, right? But <laughs> <laughs> you know, for for nerds like us, tax planning around long term care can be exciting. <laughs> you know, many people don't don't think excitement when we talk in tax planning, but no, the, the, there's the the opportunity and and how we can affect and change people's lives, and particularly small businesses around us, is is exciting. Um, and and we talk about you know long COVID and. And you're absolutely right. Expanding uh, uh, what we think of as health coverage and health planning and health benefits from the corporate standpoint and small business planning standpoint and what we can offer to to our valuable employees, um, I, I think has really increased over this season. Um, and, and so that is certainly something to come out of this, this post-COVID analysis, right, of, of how businesses are going to look different in the future and, and what they offer, right? Um, but Angie, I do want to back up a little bit and, and just highlight exactly what we're talking about uh, in terms of deductibility and why it's possible. Um, you know, you mentioned the Internal Revenue Code early on, and, and, and that's what it backs up to, right, is that mm-hmm. uh, the IRS through the Internal Revenue Code has said that long-term care premiums uh, for, for qualified long-term care plans, which are defined under uh, Section 7702B of the Internal Revenue Code, that they are eligible for deduction or, or tax preferential treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they go a step further under, under section 213. And um, you know this is nothing that you need to, to memorize or be, be all that familiar with, but just understand that any qualified long-term care premium uh, has tax preferential treatment. And there's the potential 
for deduction. And I say the potential because it depends on the scenario, whether it's an individual or a business, um, and, and there are a couple of other factors. Um, and, and many of you know that, those of you that are, are long-term care agents are very familiar with that. But what many folks don't know is that hybrid plans uh, or even uh, what we call asset-based or linked benefit long-term care insurance policies also have the potential uh, to have their long-term care premium deducted. Now, um, Securian, when we designed our, our solution, our secure care solution, uh, we designed it to have this, this tax preferential treatment. Um, and, and there are a couple of ways these, these, these uh, policies can be designed and are designed across carriers. Um, and, and so the key is that that carrier's product uh, pays for long-term care directly. So, so if you think of traditional long-term care, when you, you pay a traditional long-term care premium, it pays for that long-term care policy, and you have this premium that you could potentially file for deduction. When we're talking hybrid policies, we have long-term care that's wrapped inside of a life insurance product, right? And what the IRS has said is that life insurance, or particularly anything that's associated with life insurance cash value, you cannot include as a, a potential for deduction. And, and so in designing our product, uh, what we said is that when you pay a premium to Securian for our secure care solution, we are going to immediately pay for the long-term care part of the product directly. So as soon as we get a premium, we pay and, and, and completely uh, uh, pay up the long-term care cost of the product. And then the remaining premium goes inside of the life insurance policy. And so we've separated it out. So it's, it's two contracts in a sense. You have your long-term care policy and a life insurance policy, and they're wrapped together. But from an accounting perspective, we handle them completely separately mm -hmm. so that the long-term care costs in the policy you can be potentially deducted. Now, there, there are other carriers that, that handle their contracts uh, differently, and, and, and you'll have to, to uh, inquire with those folks exactly how their policies are structured. Mm -hmm. um, if you pay a premium to that policy and all of the premium, 100% goes into the policy cash value, uh, more than likely, uh, there's not the same potential for deduction. Uh, but there are contracts like ours that, that they're handled separately and the long-term care premium is paid outright or separately from the life insurance. And that's where you have this, this unique opportunity within these hybrid products. Yes, I love it because a lot of the big questions you get sometimes is, <clears throat> I don't understand how they can do this. How can you guarantee the premiums and have the opportunity for some tax deductibility? Because you know you can't tax deduct the life insurance premium, so this has to be smoke and mirrors. This can't work this way. Well, in fact, it can if it's right. done properly. And like you said, not, not all life with long-term care, and I'm really air quoting long-term care because they're not all true filed 7702B long-term care riders on life insurance contracts. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, you, you work with somebody that understands the differences between that because John, what I love about the folks that I get to work with in this industry is nobody believes that one solution is the only solution. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, there's places where a chronic illness rider works. There's, there's, you know, I mean, like I just had a gentleman this morning that said, Angie, I'm kind of looking for, you know, a life insurance solution that would give me some cash value. Got anything that's got a long-term care rider on it. You know, that's mm -hmm. just a completely different conversation to be had because that's usually right. in my world, when we're looking at a life insurance solution with a long-term care rider, we're looking for a true long-term care solution. We just like housing it on a life insurance policy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I kind of di di right. digress there a little bit, but you know, that it's good for people to understand the distinction between and where those opportunities lie. You, you certainly don't want to go out and make the, the broad, you know, the, the broadcast that, hey, you can you can buy life insurance and deduct it for the, the long term care benefits. I mean, that's that's too broad of a brush mm -hmm. um, to stroke on on something like this. But there are definitely those opportunities that fit. And when they do, it's just icing on the cake. And so. For those of you in your communities, and I, I just can't stress enough to, to become that resource in your community, I mean, just make yourself that resource. If somebody wants mm -hmm. to have a conversation or somebody needs, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of social and civic clubs out there and they're always looking for a 30 minute, you know, someone to come in and talk about a 30 minute presentation on something. I mean, this is really kind of how I got my footprint in my community 
on people kind of referring to me as, as I know this gal and, and she knows long-term care insurance and you should call her right. if you have questions. That's yes. really how you build yourself as that community resource. And then it just expands from there because people are going to have questions about it. I don't know, yes. we, we've not solved the misconceptions around extended care planning. So until that happens, right. you're needed. You, you are right. needed right. to have that. A absolutely. And, and, and you're, you're 100% right. It, it is, uh, the, the conversation starts with, with the importance of long-term care, elder care planning, right? That, that definitely is the focus of the conversation. Uh, but understanding this opportunity for for some additional tax deduction, particularly for our businesses, um, it, it is or can be that that little nudge that pushes them across the finish line, right? To mm -hmm. say yes, uh, I see the opportunity, and wow, the, the, it's great to get this bonus of the deduction. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move forward and offer it to my employees, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and that becomes the broader broader thing that that makes it more appealing. Exactly. Um, yeah, and when we talk about you know opportunity, um, I'll briefly throw out some 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 opportunities from an individual perspective and, and then business planning perspective. Um, when when looking at an individual, just someone that's going and, and buying a long term care policy on themselves, um, there there really is limited opportunity for deduction. Mm -hmm. um, it's limited because as, as someone files, for those of you who have, have filed your own taxes or, or you've done it with others, you understand that um, through the filing process, this is considered a, a medical expense um, or part of the medical expense deduction. Um, and, and so to take advantage of that, you know, as you're going through and, and, and adding up your ded deductions, um, you have to have at least uh, seven and a half percent of your individual adjusted gross income or AGI you know, at least seven and a half percent in medical expenses or long-term care premium before you can take any deduction, right? And, and so there are a few folks that have seven and a half percent of their income uh, that they've had in medical expenses throughout the year or long-term care premium to be able to take advantage of the deduction. Um, and, and then also keep in mind, if you have someone that's had extensive medical costs throughout the year, they, they do still have to be underwritten and qualified mm -hmm. for the solution, right? And, and so, you know, taking an individual deduction, it, it may be possible for some, uh, but but I think it's limited in the scope of folks who would qualify. Mm -hmm. Now, you did you did mention HSAs, um, and, and so for an individual, that's really where the opportunity lies. I think is is uh, funding the long term care portion of the policy out of an HSA. Um, and, and so whether it's an, an HSA or other type of medical savings account, pretty much all of the the medical savings accounts um, that exist are eligible except for the FSA, the flexible uh, spending account. But those others uh, are eligible to fund the long-term care portion of premium out of those. And really how we handle it is you'd make two payments. Um, we have the life insurance part of the premium and the long-term care part of the premium. And you could fund that LTC part of the premium, make a payment from your HSA, um, you can do it electronically or write a check from the HSA and then fund the rest of it out of pocket. Um, and, and so depending on, you know, the client's age, uh, as well as their long-term care costs, you could have a good part of the premium that uh, you can pay from that tax preferential account. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say based on the client's age, um, the, the IRS through the Internal Revenue Code has set out uh, limits for the amount that you can deduct or fund from those tax preferential plans. Um, and, and those are what we call, you know, Internal Revenue Code, uh, medical expense or, or age-based limits. Um, those age-based limits, for example, for someone that's between 61 and 70 is uh, in 2021 was $4,520. And so if you're funding a plan over 10 years or, or 15 years, let's say, and, and you're, you're paying 10 grand a month uh, in long-term care premium, you could fund up to that $4,520 from your HSA and pay the rest out of pocket. So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of an idea of, of how that would work. And, and so that's really the, the opportunity on an individual basis. But when we're talking businesses, and, and this is business owners, uh, or, or uh, employees, um, there's a bit more of an opportunity. Um, and, and briefly, Angie, we'll, uh, go ahead. Were you, were you going to jump no, in No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with you. And I, I think, 
I think people on that individual side would be um, surprised at how many folks probably actually carry HSAs, you know, because we talk about that being a high deductible health insurance plan. Well, <laughs> tell me anybody running around the country that's got a 250 or a $500 deductible plan. Keep in mind, it doesn't just mean any high deductible. It, it is truly got to be filed as an HSA, you know, high deductible health insurance plan. But there that's are right. a lot of those around and people just don't realize that they can actually run that age-based premium through that plan on a tax preferred basis. So yeah, I was agreeing That's with right. you, John. No, no, absolutely, Angie. I, you know, I haven't seen the, the most recent uh, statistic, but I believe there are nearly a trillion dollars that's been accumulated in HSAs nationally. Um, and so as more uh, companies have moved to those high deductible plans, um, there are a lot of assets that are that have really over the past few years started to be funneled to, to these HSAs and, and yep. qualified medical savings accounts. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's significant assets there and potential opportunity. Um, you, you know, as, as um, a business planning uh, opportunity, you know, I get a lot of questions on uh, business owned plans, right? Is, is the mm. business, mm -hmm. um, you know, the business is going to buy this, um, they'll own it. Uh, and own it on behalf of the employee. Um, that's generally not what we're talking about. A business could certainly purchase a policy on an individual. Um, they could own it. You know, if that if that employee uh, files for long term care and needs care, that business would receive the long term care benefits uh, as the owner of the contract and be responsible for paying for that employee's care or or sending that money to the employee. Um, that's generally what, not what we're talking about. There's not a tax deduction in that arrangement. Um, there may be some other reasons you want to do that as a business, but it's, it's generally not what provides that, that tax opportunity. Um, the, the business planning opportunity is, is individually owned contracts. So a, an executive or an owner of the business that's going to uh, purchase a policy, own it individually or outright, and then the business funds it. So the business makes the premium payment even though it's individually owned. Um, and so if the business makes that premium payment on behalf of the employee, um, they are providing an employee benefit and therefore can take a deduction, right? Um, and between the two, really two business types, we're talking uh, pass-throughs or C-corps. Mm -hmm. um, and your pass-throughs are your S-corps or sole proprietorships, partnerships, right? Um, those pass-throughs, uh, an owner can buy a policy, pay for premium from the business, um, and, and then the owner can take a deduction. Uh, and, and in an S-corp, they can take a deduction up to the, the age-based limits that I mentioned earlier. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got some, some great tax material that outlines what those limits are between age bands. Um, but the, the great thing about an S-corp, a business owner, is, is they can take an above-the-line deduction. So they don't have to itemize like an individual, uh, but as a business owner, they can take an above the line deduction. Basically, you know, we bought this long-term care policy from the premium, uh, uh, from the business. Uh, our age-based limit is $4,500. I can take a straight, straight deduction of $4,520 because it was a, a business benefit uh, uh, purchased by the business for the owner. And, and so that is our, our S-Corp arrangement. Um, and then in your, your larger corporations are, are filed C-Corps. Um, that business can purchase a policy, uh, pay premium. The, the executive or the individual uh, that's receiving the benefit is going to be owner of the policy. But if the business pays for it, um, as an employee benefit, the business can actually deduct 100% of the premium. Um, and so I mentioned that this is where the opportunity is, is, is big, it's growing, there's a lot of conversations happening, happening in this market, uh, because the business can take a full deduction of premium. Uh, but unlike life insurance or some of the other opportunities that we use in business planning or executive benefit planning, um, the executive that receives this benefit or the employee that receives the benefit only has to, to claim a portion of that premium as received income or W-2 income. Um, and, and so Angie, to, to use numbers to make it a little bit more understandable, um, if we have a business that, that uh, um, let's say they do a five pay uh, secure care policy, they're gonna pay $20,000 a year for five years, a uh, total of 100,000 over the five years. As the business makes this $20,000 annual premium, 
they're deducting uh, $20,000 each year. Uh, the employee, when they look at their policy, the employee may have $5,000 in life insurance cost and $15,000 in long-term care premium cost. And so as they receive this benefit from their employer of, of $20,000 a year in value, they only have to claim $5,000 of earned income from that benefit and can exclude the $15,000 that represents the long-term care premium. Good, John. I'm, I'm glad you I, I'm glad you made that differential because I do think it, there, there, it does get a little bit lost in translation and that made it really pretty clear because what you don't want to do is cause that death benefit to be taxable, you know, upon a death. So that's right. That, that was great clarification on that. That's right, Angie. And, you know, from the, the business perspective, there's there's a lot of opportunities in, in, in that planning conversation. If we're talking a, a business that wants to put in, you know, a key executive plan or key person plan, um, uh, do some executive comp planning, or even a buy-sell arrangement, there are some unique, unique opportunities in introducing uh, these type of plans to a business to, to, to hedge their risk. You know, when we think of buy-sells, we think of... Uh, you know, life insurance and, 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 and how business mm -hmm. partners uh, can buy their business share from one another. Um, but we don't often address, you know, health risk. If you have, mm -hmm. you know, aging business partners that have been in business together and one of them becomes disabled or needs care, um, the 50% or, or a big share of the, the uh, working capital of that business has been lost, right? And, and so we can structure a long-term care policy uh, so that as the long-term care payments are being paid, one business owner is buying out in installments the share of the other owner's business. And, and so you can even use this in a buy-sell arrangement uh, uh, to hedge against uh, not just uh, death of a business owner, uh, but, but aging and, and, and uh, business owners becoming disabled or needing long-term care. So you, you can take this conversation in a variety of directions. Um, when, when helping businesses plan for, for this kind of risk. I, I love it. And I, I, I kind of, I guess, if you will, forewarned everybody that, that our podcast today was going to be about, you know, some, some LTC and some advanced tax planning scenarios. But I, I do feel like as we get ready to round out this year and, and businesses are starting to look at their bottom lines and those that are, you know, profitable and still in business, there are great opportunities for us to go visit with them. And even though maybe some of this, you know, if it, if it flew over your head a little bit, don't worry about that. Um, it's just about education. It's just about getting yourself comfortable with having that conversation, understanding how these opportunities fit inside that business space. And there are wonderful opportunities with that. And, and John, you always do a fantastic job, which is why I wanted to piggyback and you were so gracious to do two podcasts in a row with me and and I, I greatly appreciate that and thank you so much for rounding out long-term care awareness month and uh, talking about all of our different planning scenarios that we can do with our small businesses thank you angie it was uh, yeah, really a, a blessing to be on with you and and, and get to join you twice <laughs> so it, it, I definitely uh, appreciate it. And, and it was so good to be with you. And, you know, it, it's hard to believe the year is coming to a close, but you know, happy holidays to you and, and uh, your, your agents and clients. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, John. And don't forget, I do have one more podcast rounding out 2021, and that will be on December the 28th the last Tuesday of December, almost getting us to the very end of the year. I'm going to try to come up with something fun, um, something exciting that we can kind of wrap, wrap the, the year up with and um, kind of looking forward to 2022 and, and what the uh, extended care planning space looks like. So again, John, thank you very much. Thank you for everybody for joining me. And I look forward to uh, next month's podcast. Take care. <laughs>